Hello there all you wonderful people of the internet. Today uh, we are organizing our milk room. So we have a milk room. <laughs> we literally changed our floor plan for our house like last minute when we were building from a two or three bedroom to a technically it is still three bedrooms but it also has like an office which is this room and it was Renny's room. Well Revenary really wanted to try sharing again and it had been like over a year and we're like well we'll just try it and see how it goes. And they've been doing great. It's not always great because they are kids but they've been doing good and it's fine. So, and that kind of came at the perfect time because then our milk cow came into milk and we realized, wow, we really need basically like a whole room just to house everything. <laughs> we didn't need it, but it would have required having a fridge out in the garage and shuffling constantly between the kitchen and the garage, which... Originally, we were, we were going to make like a guest room. It was sitting as a guest room. Yeah. And then the milk, the cow came into milk and we are like, let's just make that a food prep room. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we did. So... This just got here today, so we're gonna ignore that. Before, it was this little table. This, which has been very helpful in organizing. Um, so we organize all of our milk by colors. We have this little sign right here, so it tells us like when um, we milked that specific milk, so we know how old it is. And then we try to not keep anything, obviously, over a week. If anything's over a week, that typically goes to the pigs, if it's extra. Um, and then obviously our milk cow is feeding us feeding both of our parents and the calves are on her milk as well and as then well the, the pigs. Here in North Carolina we cannot legally sell raw milk unless it is for pet consumption yes so essentially what we have to do is we have to sell shares to our herd so people that are members of the herd share technically own a piece of our like herd. a share of our herd mm -hmm. so um, and then essentially that means they are partial owners of the herd and can therefore consume the raw milk or they have access to the raw milk. Yeah, so they don't buy the raw milk. They, they actually pay, they pay a, uh, like maintenance care fees for right. having a share of the herd and then they get the milk. This is kind of like our setup, what we have. You know, Ryan gets back from milking. He comes over here, strains everything, and then it goes right into our milk fridge. But this is our milk fridge. And then this, we had two milk fridges before we got pigs and had a herd share and everything, we were filling two fridges almost with milk. Right. So this has now switched over to a freezer. So these are fridge freezers are actually like dual purpose. So you can make it a fridge or a freezer, which is really awesome. Um, they're by Insignia. They're actually really affordable too. We got both of them from Best Buy, um, like ordered for delivery online. I think this one was like eight something, almost 900. Yeah. Like 890 like something seven. and that was like 790 something. Yeah. Which is a really good price. Um, Especially having the ability to convert. Yeah, so you can convert to fridge to or freezer. So today we acquired this. Uh, Trace picked it up from Sam's Club for us. Um, Previously, that was all just piled up on the yeah, floor. Yeah, it was right just piled on the floor. So our thinking is we're gonna move this fridge over here. This is on wheels, so we're gonna put it like at an angle in this corner here, so we can just pull it out when we want it, so it doesn't take up floor space. We're, we have a slightly bigger table that's in the garage, I think, right now. We're going to put that here, and so I'm hoping with that we can take our dehydrator off the floor and leave it mm. on there so we can actually use the yeah. dehydrator. <laughs> um, and then this will come out, and that smaller cube shelf will come out as well, so we won't use those. into a problem. Keeping in mind these are both the same freezer. You see this? The ground is on the bottom and it goes down. That one's already plugged in. The ground is on the bottom and it goes down. Which means it's it covers the other outlet. Okay, now this one is not going to be able to go in. Voila, here is my solution. It is a smart Amazon smart plug. <laughs> can support up to 15 amps, which this is certainly less than 15 amps. So, what I can do here is put that there, plug this in, and turn it on. This is not an ideal situation and it will not be permanent because uh, this smart plug, essentially if the power were to go off, that would turn off. When the power comes back on, it would not automatically turn back on. Uh, if I remember correctly, because we used to have that on a lamp in our old house, and I believe that is kind of the behavior that I noticed. However, for the time being, this will work uh, and enables us to plug both of those into the same <laughs> same outlet. 
again, not ideal, but we gotta make do with what we got. So that's what my solution for today is. Okay, so here we go. Freezer, boom, fridge, got that. Awesome. Welcome back to another day on the farm. Today, it is Friday. Ariana actually just did her first batch of pressure canning uh, and did just over two and a half gallons of chicken stock. So this is all the stock that she canned. Now, I don't know if we mentioned it or if, actually I don't think, I don't think it was mentioned. We did this last weekend process 42 chickens. Um, so that was 42, that was us, that was my parents. Tim helped a little bit and then uh, some of our friends came over and helped and so they took 12 chickens and then we, well, we processed them all on Saturday and then Sunday we actually split them all out. Uh, not all of them, majority of them. We did what, like 35? Six. Yeah, so I, I don't know how many Sean and Tracy kept whole. Of the 42, we actually split out so we cut them into breasts, legs, wings, thighs, um, and all that. But we did have a bunch of, obviously, all the leftovers. We've got the carcasses, we've got the legs, we've got the organs and stuff. A bunch of that we gave to the pigs. We do have a bunch of carcasses still in the freezer for the pigs at a later date. The necks and stuff we kept, froze them for the dogs. The dogs, oddly enough, like don't want to eat them though. I don't know why. <laughs> I think they just really prefer the nice factory farm taste. Apparently. And so Ariana made the stock, the chicken stock, right? Is it stock or broth? I think it's kind of bone broth. But yeah, so made the chicken broth from the chicken feet mm -hmm. and then canned it. So that's like the first like full canning of homemade materials. I mean, no, we first, first pressure so canning. First time pressure canning. Yeah. So mainly it's these two baskets right now. Uh, we do have a chest freezer out in the garage that is completely full at this point yeah. between carcasses, whole chickens, and then some of the stuff that's broken out. So this is, this is breasts, all breasts and tenders. That we had. No, all breasts. Oh, that's all breasts. All breasts here. This all is the wings, wings are in here, and tenders. The tenders that were in here, and there's a one drumstick. Gotcha. Um, and then I have these. My friend gave me some of her green beans, and so I vacuum cleaned them, sealed vacuum them. sealed them, and put them in. But all in all, of the 30 chickens that we kept, again, our friends took 12 of them, um, of the 30 that we had, we actually bagged just over 90 pounds of meat in the freezer. So again, that is not including like any of the stuff that you wouldn't typically you know, purchase from the store for you know, consumption. So like the feet, carcasses, the organs and all that. Which we're still using. Right, which are still going to be utilized for feed for the pigs, for the dogs. We spent probably between the two days about seven hours doing all that processing. Again, there was, what, six of us um, that were doing that. So it was a bit time consuming, but when we did the math, it came out to about $2 a pound of meat in the freezer. If you were to go to the store and purchase, you know, pasture-raised, fresh chicken, that would be substantially more expensive than ten dollars a pound. Yeah, substantially more expensive than you the can't two dollars. Non-pasture-raised for that right now. Right, especially Easy. breasts. Yeah. Um, but while we're here, we can show. Uh, them yeah, we can we can finish showing this. So it is a little more crammed, I feel like, in the room, but it's so much better organized. Oh yeah. It works much better even though there's not quite as much floor space. But we don't really yeah, need don't floor need. space in here because... So we do have this rack here like Ryan showed you guys moving into this corner. Um, I labeled these and moved some of our stuff from our Ooh. pantry over here like all-purpose flour, granola, oats, citric acid which we use for cheese making and then the last one is nutritional yeast. Um, and so then we just we have stuff random stuff here. So like this is our stuff for processing chickens. We've got um, parts and like manuals for our milk machine. Some like serving ware. This is going to have a lot of cans on it soon though. And yeah. other stuff will be finding other homes. Um, and then this one is really the, the workhorse of the, the day. 
Um, and so this has all of our stuff, excuse me, neighbor, um, for actually canning so or for actually processing the milk and stuff. So, so I added all of these labels onto here. Um, we talked about that we color code um, so that we know like what day of the week we milked. And so those are there. And then below, typically that shelf is full with two instant pots. Yeah, but we just got done using those for the broth, so they're not there right now. We have our cream separator, all of our jars. Um, and so yeah, we have like our filters here and extra strainers for straining the milk. We have here is all the cheese and butter stuff. So like cheesecloths, the molds for cheese, gelatin, this little strainer. So I use to like remove the curds, um, my handy gloves that I use for mainly for making mozzarella because it's very hot and you have to stick your hand basically in boiling water over and over again. So use that. And then we have our our new one of our newer things, which is our um, food this, saver vacuum food sealer. Saver. This is what we did with all the meat um, for the chicken, and I'm really glad we had it because yeah. it was much better than doing like Ziplocs, which would cost freezer burn. Like yeah. That. So. That was nice. And then up here we have instant pot parts, and this is all unused um, lids. lids and canning lids. And canning lids. lids, but that's gonna get moved because some overflow went over here, so we <laughs> can find somewhere else to put it. But yeah, so it's working. I'm really glad we got everything labeled because it makes it easy if someone else like comes into the room and like if we're gone and they need to take care of stuff, it's like all labeled for them. Yeah. You know, where things are. Polar bear. <laughs> she looks like a baby polar bear back in there. <laughs> Ready? You look like a baby polar bear running behind us. A baby polar bear running behind us. <laughs> She's so I got funny. Bell. She looks like a little polar bear. Oh, cutie pie. <laughs> Okay. Right now, uh, I mentioned it in the last video when we did the drone overview. Um, this area back here behind the barn, we we're going to close it in for snicks. Long term, we are going to flip it over to be uh, a wood sided fence. But right now, we're just to simply get him over here. We're going to put the posts up, and um, I don't know if Tammy wants just poly tape or the wire. Basically, nothing, it's not going to be electrified, but just a barrier essentially to keep him in um, that way he doesn't walk off that's the plan for here so I brought the auger that our friends have let us borrow numerous times and it is wonderful uh, Ryobi uh, battery powered auger and so basically I'm gonna drill I'm gonna do a hole about right here yeah give or take right here put a wood post and then we'll run it out to one of well, one of these wood posts over here, probably the one straight ahead, that one. So it'll be basically from there to here and then up to the barn. And then I'm also thinking, because right there is a double gate. There's two gates there. And really, if this is going to be closed in for snicks, there really is no need to have a double gate there for large vehicles to get through beyond just the tractor. So I'm going to take one of those gates off. We're going to put another wood post in between and then we'll just close off uh the other half so that's kind of what my thinking is right now and uh yeah let's get started <laughs> This morning there were t-posts all the way over here a wooden post over there a couple of t-posts and this wooden post here and so uh, Tim and Tammy took those out thank you much um, so now I'm just gonna take one of these go put it up in that new hole and again I'm gonna take one of these others uh, back in between those gates miss Rooney here this is really I think her first time up at the barn oh you know what we don't have what? What? The uh, sledgehammer, I think it's back in the garage. What's a sledgehammer? The big hammer? Wow, that hole is not straight. Oh my goodness, there's tons of them. Can I step in the poop or no? What are you wearing? Barefoot. We don't have to. I'm a farm girl, I don't care. I don't care either. But wash your hand or wash your feet before you go inside. Okay. Okie dokie. Look at all these. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Aaron, take a tomato. This oh. is all stuff that got thrown back Ew. here last year. 
You want to eat some? Num, num, num. Where did this stuff grow at? The compost. In the poop pile. Yeah, poopy. Uh, this is the... <laughs> Aries bear feeder in it. Mine too. Yep. This is the manure pile we where care. we've been uh, throwing manure oh, no, from the stalls no, no, no. for... A uh, couple months. About a year now, actually. Uh, manure probably still does. Yep. And all this stuff grew Yum. back here just from old stuff that we Thanks tossed for out. Daddy, can you see me? Daddy, can you see me? Yep. Is that a yummy poop pile tomato? Yeah. See? Remember when I give the There's chickens potatoes? Purple potatoes. Purple potatoes. Potatoes Growing here. in the poop. Growing in the poop pile, which is kind of disgusting, yeah. but. But I don't. Somewhere. This is. Is it cucumbers or is it a different type of melon? I don't know. I think it's cucumber. We threw cucumbers back here, and you know what, yeah, Daddy? I know. I know why things are growing in here, like the extra piece of the from the chickens f snacks, and we just airy me would put them in buckets and throw them out here. Can I go show them the horses? Sure. Yay! Phoenix. Oh, she lost her fly mask a couple minutes ago. I'll show you the kitties. The posy. This is posy. This is this is ginger. And this is Crookshanks. 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 Hey, Gingy. Hey, Ginger. Hey, Posy. Posy. Okay. None of them have holes. Oh, this one does. No, 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 Potatoes in here. Oh, no. You got a lot of potatoes today? Oh, a big one has a hole for us. So, yeah, as Rev mentioned, this is just. This is where we've been throwing manure for about a year now. And we've thrown uh, leftover vegetables. Like this was our compost pile, basically. Uh, we were just throwing stuff back here. So as you can see, we have potatoes, uh, tomatoes, um, what are those, sunflowers. And then I think, I think these, this is some kind of melon. Uh, I don't remember exactly what. Um, and okay, so yeah, there's some melons and I think some cucumbers over there. But yeah, I mean, do are we getting super great yield out of this? No, not necessarily, but the, I mean, this is nature. This is what it does. You, the seeds go to the ground, they rest over the year, and then they start to sprout in the spring. Perfect example of kind of the, the culture uh, of what we want to do on the property, but obviously we want to be able to have a better yield. If you didn't watch the other channel, actually even on the other channel, there's never really a, a good introduction to Rune. This is Runa. Uh, this is Thor. If you didn't watch the other channel, he's our livestock guardian dog. He does a wonderful job keeping the predators at way. Um, and then we got a little Rune here. We got Rune, what, about a month ago? Yeah, maybe. About a month ago or so. And so uh, she is uh, uh, LGD in training. Thor is still uh, trying to get used to her. She's a puppy. I think she, we've had her about a month, so that would mean she's about three months old, give or take. So she's definitely still a puppy and uh, working with her on that. But Thor is also trying to train her. Well, our goal is to get Thor to train <laughs> Thor doesn't always want to be around her though because of that puppy age. <laughs> she's so cute. And this, this is what Thor doesn't like, and he'll yap at her in a minute. Or just walk away. That works too. So we just milked Essie. I didn't think about recording that, but what's up? Um, but you need to help us dump that. I'll, dump, I'll help you dump that, yep. So we milked Essie, and uh, we went back, we took the milk, we processed the milk, got it filtered and jarred and put in the fridge. And now we are back to clean the machine. And the kids love that cleaning. Good? Yep, that's good. Okay. Oh, I'm going okay. first. Then I'll do the next one. Hey, Roomsley. Okay, so first she's filling, putting it in the bucket with warm, soapy water. And then the next part is water. hot, water. no, water. hot vinegar water. So we'll run that through until this is 
just about empty. Go ahead and turn it off. And then put it on in there, but don't turn it this guy will pop this off. I'm gonna dump it and also do take this. this. We will. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, oh, good job, thank you. So we're just essentially dumping it on the stanchion to clean the stanchion. Such we're gonna. Well, that's okay, not a big deal. Hey, Will, come here. Yep, dump that, grab the washcloths, put the washcloths back in there. I think she wants some milk tonight. Okay, gotta get that stuff back in the golf cart, put the lids back on the buckets, get the buckets back in the golf cart. Rain back in the golf cart? Rain back in the golf cart, no. But yes, it has rained like four, the last four days, at least a little bit. And it's been great. So then I just roll the machine back into the barn. Up, oh, Thor, you gotta move, bud. That's a first. Never, never seen him in here. And then uh, basically, we just cover this with a tarp, protect it from dust and any potential rain that might get in. And then in the morning when we start milking, um, I run it, run a cycle through it to clean it, just make sure it's clean and sterile, and then uh, we start milking. <laughs>